Assalamu alaikum, uh, good day. Uh, today I'm gonna give this lecture in English actually for the sake of one of my friends who asked me for things about the expansion joint and the effective diameter and because of him I made this lecture uh, and uh, because of that I'm gonna give this lecture in English. Uh, let's let's start on this uh, lecture. Uh, the main question of this lecture actually is the effective diameter. Uh, when you uh, install uh, or model an expansion joint, let me remind you how we model the expansion joint. If we are modeling expansion joint, let's use a United one uh, pressure fifty eight pillows well, well neck. Here we model an expansion joint. When we model an expansion joint, uh, the program automatically uh, will uh, give the effective diameter. What is the use of the effective diameter? The use of the effective diameter is to calculate the uh, pressure thrust and consider it as a force. Okay, uh, pressure thrust is something confusing uh, we use this term as a pressure thrust in uh, in the analysis of the relief valve in the analysis of water humming what is the meaning of the pressure thrust pressure thrust actually if we if we draw the pipe like this The pressure thrust is the pressure inside the inside the the pipe. But uh, why we don't consider it in the normal cases? Because uh, the force, how we calculate the force, the force is equal to k times x. X is the is the change in length or the elongation, and k is the stiffness. Okay, uh, and this is the elongation or the change in it. And this is how we, cal we calculate the force. Uh, in the normal cases or in the pipe, the pipe have a very large stiffness which make the elongation nearly, or, uh, nearly zero. Uh, because of that, we don't consider this term in the normal cases. But in the case of the expansion joint, if we have a case of expansion joint, like this, here the expansion joint start to have a stiffness. If we consider it, it's something like spring right now, maybe we, in this case, if we check uh, the stiffness is 315.59, okay, this is the stiffness. Uh, so in this, in this time, the, the, this force will have a number. And this is as a spring, uh, you will have a displacement of in our change in length. This force will make an effect and make change in length. For example, if we consider it like this, we have here force okay, of the expansion joint. Okay. This force is equal to what? This force is equal to times area of the expansion joint or the effective area of the expansion joint which means it's equal to pressure times pi over 4 times diameter effective square 
this is how the program calculate this force but in the normal case that if we don't have any bends and any problems it, the force will be only going straight inside the pipe until it face an anchor support or whatever or axial support but in case we have anchor nozzle or whatever in this case if we have it like this the bend and here we have the bend this force will affect here and it could be considered same as the force of the uh, of the water hammering when you have a bend it makes a force which trying to elongate this part this part would be elongated by what this part would be elongated by the force okay divided the stiffness and this will be the our give our x this is the case when we have a bend okay this is the and this is the normal case and this is and this what the program is automatically doing this okay in case that we have nozzle for example a pump or whatever should we consider this if we have a nozzle like this and we have a pump for example here in the impeller and the shaft of the impeller okay should we consider this force on the nozzle no we should not consider this force on the nozzle why because actually what is the source of this nozzle the source of this nozzle is the inside fluid which is coming inside the pipe the source of this nozzle is the inside fluid okay if we consider this is the suction and this is the source of the fluid is the fluid will will make the force here do you do you think that there will be any force here no of course they will not because the fluid will directly go on the impeller which is centrifugal if we consider it it's centrifugal pump which will take it as in centrifugal and send it outside so the actual force will be here or here the effect of the fluid the pressure of the fluid will be here or here in this case what we will do in this case you have the force the effective force of the uh, expansion joint and the in other in other in other in the other side the there will never there will never be a force because the, the pump will suck the pressure actually it will suck the pressure of the fluid inside it how we do this or how we do this calculation or how we will do this let me add an extra page In this case, we will have extra two forces. We will remove the force of the expansion joint because, in this case, this ex this that this uh, law will not be applicable. We will have. Uh, sorry.
we will have here let's say if hello and we will have also a small force here let's consider it f1 okay so how we will do this in this case we will do it manually and how we calculate these forces fe will be equal to p times the area of the pipe thickness which means the difference between the effective uh, actually the 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 pedal thickness i'm sorry which we will have d effective negative 2 d inside diameter all square and this small for the sorry this is f1 sorry this is will be f1 and f elbow will be equal to pressure times the area of the pipe which is the inside diameter square let us try an example on this uh, I have this case which is the pipe coming directly from a tank going to the pump uh, we have here a nozzle 30 then the node on the nozzle is 30 I have an expansion joint let's try this let's run with the effective diameter I didn't remove the effective diameter so he will calculate the thrusting force by his by his own calculation by the equation that I mentioned let's have it here let's take the operational case you'll find that the force on the nozzle is significantly high and you will find it the negative also on the nozzles of the tank on the nozzle of the tank okay this is because we consider the effective diameter uh, let's go back and by the way uh, this uh, this load you can calculate it as I mentioned from uh, this this load is calculated from this equation this force you can try it by your own hand okay let's go back let's have be moving and let's remove this one let's run again okay you find that the load is significantly low uh, but you would still keep asking me from where he got this 900 uh, 4967 uh, it's easily and go here 
and let's have the displacement on the on the on the displacement on the node which is 15.36 15.36 Calculate f equal k times x. X we know it is fifteen point fifteen point three six seven point. Three, six, seven. Let's have the the factor. It's fifteen three hundred fifteen. Point five nine three hundred fifteen point five nine one. If you multiply this times fifteen point three seven, you found out that the total force is four eight four nine point six nine newton which is nearly the output of the calculation it should you find it more or less this pipe and the weight and the extra expansion which is nearly the same with difference 100 more okay this is the way uh, the, this calculation happened okay let me set you an example how we can include it, uh, the uh, how can we model this piece if we have a pump if we have a tank it will be the same if we have any nozzle it will be the same uh, I will change this model because uh, this model uh, because this model have a tank so we have nozzles in both cases I want to show you how to apply the uh, the force okay now we will start uh, show you how to apply the forces if we have a nozzles or the pump or for the uh, tanks or uh, for both. Uh, now we will start to make some calculation for this nozzles. The first we will calculate the Fe force and the F1 forces. The F1 force will be the pressure that we are using. The, I'm, I'm using the operating pressure, so I will take five bars times. 3.14 which is by divided by 4 uh, times uh, the effective diameter which is 355.672 millimeters sorry minus uh, the uh, inside diameter which is three uh, three hundred and four point eight all uh, square root uh, with square all square uh, this will give you f1 equal to uh, uh, ten thousand one hundred ninety nine newton for the f of the elbow, which we will apply on the elbow, we will have uh, P. Okay, we can apply directly this one five times 
3.14 divided by 4 times 304.8 all square. This will give you the F E equal to three six four six four four point four. Okay. How will I find this on the program? We'll go here. We have the expansion joint here. First of all, we will go to here. First, we will remove the diameter and the effective diameter. Then we will go to the, the flange and try to apply a force in the Z direction equal to the F1, uh, which we calculated, which is 1057. Okay, in the Z direction. And we will come here also and apply force, little force more, which is equal to 1057. 157, yes. Okay. Then we will go here. Oh, okay. This. And we will go here and on the elbow node, which is 20, we will also apply force in the negative D direction, which is the opposite side of the flange, will be equal 9, uh, negative 3, 6, 4, 6, 4, 4, point 4 Newton. Now we applied the forces of the uh, expansion joint. Let's run it. Of course, we have a very bad situation because we applied a big load, and we will find that you have here extra load in the z direction and in 100, and so, sorry, on the tank nozzle also. Why we have this? Because there is a thrusting pressure, thrusting load on the elbow and we should carry it by some anchor because of that you need to put a restraint on the point 20 and uh, apply it on the Z direction by the way you can put the restraint also on the 28 but I want I want it here to because Later on, I will show you another thing. Uh, let's run it again. We still have an expansion. Uh, the, this expansion is failure, and I know. I think I know why because of node 18 and node 28. Let's have the animation, let me show you why. This is why. See, I'm completely anchoring this point and this, and this, side of the pipe needs to have an expansion and I don't give any expansion to it. So most probably I will added an expansion join here also. Okay. You will ask me why I'm putting all these guides
you ask me why I'm putting all this guide. This guides because you need to put a guide next uh, uh, on the line of the expansion joint because here, especially this one, I'm using the uh, non-tied uh, expansion joint, uh, which is completely free. It's just like spring. If you if you are not controlling the pipe, it will go uh, on the lateral sides, and the expansion joint is cannot go too much on the lateral sides, and it cannot take a torsion. So you have to make sure that you are not applying this on the expansion joint. Okay, so let us do here and let's put here also an expansion joint. Uh, we will use the same, so we don't need to recalculate again. We will have a knighted 50. It, uh, it convolutions. Uh, Apply from yes build okay so we have another one in this case we will also need to put restraints these guys I will run it now, but we are not finished because I didn't remove the, exp the uh, effective diameter. But I want to show you if we run it with the effective diameter, what will be the case. Why I'm using the operation second operation because I'm calculating on the operational pressure. And when you evaluate the nozzles of the tank or the pump uh, based on P31.3, you need to evaluate it on the operation maximum operational uh, load, not the design load. Uh, but uh, but take in consideration that you take when you check the flange leakage, you check you check it on the design conditions. Uh, here you will see that the load increased actually. Why? Because we still have an effective di the effective diameter, which putting the load that we already calculated that the 36, uh, the 364,000 newtons, which is applied here. So what we need to do that we will go back. And can go here, removing the effective diameter, and let's apply the forces the same way that we applied on the on the other uh, expansion joint. Uh, Ten hundred fifty-seven, and here we will also apply force. Ten hundred fifty-seven. And we will come here on 20. You have two ways to apply this force. Either you can you you can do it like this, and in this case, the program will calculate it based on the resultant force. And you can do it another way. You can put another force, affecting force here. Uh, it will not appear, but it will appear on the uh, load cases. Uh, and after applying it, we need also to put the restraint on the x direction. Okay. Uh, let's run the check to apply the changes on the 
on the load case. Since we are using the second force, it, you will have a, another force here, which is F2. You need to apply it on the operating load case that you are checking. So we will add it here and run the analysis again. Okay, let's see. Yes, now. Of course, you can see that it's already safe right now. Uh, the load on the pump is nearly 12,000, 12, 12, which is okay. And let us see it. Or let me show it on the graphics so you can see it better. As you can see in the Z direction, you will have 12,000, and on the uh, nozzle, you will have also 14,000. If you want to reduce this, you can reduce it by uh, applying a more uh, expansion joint uh, or bigger expansion joint. Let's see the, the displacement. We have here five millimeters in the Z direction and we have here six millimeters. Uh, the trick here is on the stiffness in the selection of the uh, nozzle and um, the selection of the expansion joint that you need to uh, If you want to reduce the load, you can either way. Let us try it. If we increase the, the stiffness, what will happen? Of course, you can imagine what will happen. It, you will reduce the displacement. That means that the load will increase. we increase the stiffness. Remember the relation the F is equal to the stiffness times to the displacement. So if you want to reduce the load extra, you will need to reduce the stiffness of the expansion joint or use a, a bigger one. So you can come here if we take it, the other one was 315. If we take it for example, um, 200. And on the game. You can see here that this uh, load had been reduced, not significantly because we didn't we only change a hundred newton per millimeters but still you can reduce through this way i hope this lecture was helpful and my friend understand what i mean and i hope you got now what's the meaning of the pressure thrust and how to apply the the forces on the expansion joint if you want to use if you want to use the expansion joint especially on the nozzles because it's very tricky and uh, i hope uh, this is well explained